Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be talking about FRQs today. And so the big question is, what in the heck is an FRQ? And so hopefully by the end of uh, our presentation here, we'll be able to give you some information, some tips, some tricks that might help you out on how to write your FRQ. Also, we're hoping that this is a way for us to help you in your future on the AP exam in May, hopefully in future courses, helping you learn how to write FRQs. So let's take a look. What is an FRQ? An FRQ is a free response question. Essentially, it's an essay, uh, but there's some different rules that go along with what we're going to be doing. And these will be in the place of a test usually. And so when we look at it on the AP Human Geography exam in May, all right, um, there will be three FRQs. Typically, they are worth 50% of the exam score. So you'll have uh, a 50 point multiple choice test, and you'll also have these three FRQs, these free response questions. Each of them make up half of your grade on the AP Human Geography exam. The points on the exam are earned for correct information. There are no penalties for incorrect information. Uh, the questions usually have multiple parts, usually A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Not always though, sometimes less than that. Um, the questions typically combine multiple units of study and topics together to kind of create a, a combined or conglomerate question asking you about all of your knowledge across the discipline of human geography, not just one specific area or topic. And they typically have some kind of visual or stimuli. In fact, usually with those three FRQs on the AP Human Geography exam, you would have one that would just be the questions. You would have a second question that would have charts and graphs together. And then you'd probably have a third question that would have some kind of picture or map to look at as well, some kind of stimuli. In class, it'll be a little bit different. For our class, for AP Human Geography, we will have um, usually in each unit one practice FRQ that we will do during the unit. So we'll either be practicing uh, just the general um, writing to help you out, uh, or it could be the formatting. It could be uh, maybe a topic on that specific unit that will help you uh, for the future as well. But it will be some kind of practice that we will do in class. And then at the end of each unit, after the unit one exam, each unit exam will also include a free response question portion. All right. And so the, the in-class FRQs are not going to be worth 50% of your test score like the, the ones on the AP Human Geography exam in May. These are typically anywhere from um, 20 to 30 points, maybe, uh, maybe less sometimes, but right in that range overall. Um, and it will be added into your summative scores for the class then. All right, so it's not attached to the unit exam, the multiple choice section, but it is part of the uh, summative uh, evaluation, I guess you can say, for each, each unit. When we look at writing styles for FRQs, there really isn't an official style of writing for an FRQ. Um, what we can tell you, though, is what you've learned in English and how to format a paragraph and format uh, an essay isn't necessarily the most important thing. Right? There is no need for an introduction. There is no need for a thesis statement. They literally just want you to answer the question. Now, the idea of proper paragraph format is important. You should still be using proper paragraph format to write and answer the questions. Um, but again, there is you don't need an introduction paragraph. You don't need um, a specific thesis statement paragraph. It, it's just answer the question using proper paragraph format. When it comes to each section, you should label each section on the paper. So if you are answering part A, you should label it A, all right? And then put your answer next to where you've labeled A. If you're answering B, you should label it B and then answer your question or answer the, the question and then spot. Make sure that when you are answering these questions, you are using specific vocabulary from our class, from AP Human Geography, to help you complete your answers. And make sure you're writing well thought out, well explained answers as well. All right, we'll talk more about that. We'll give you a little bit of an idea on, on how much you should write for different answers and different questions. And then finally, on the AP exam, so in May, um, if it is illegible, if they are unable to read it, and they will try very, very hard to do it, um, the way it's set up, they have different tables that read questions. They'll take them to different tables and make sure everyone can have a chance at reading it. Um, but if they cannot read the answer, it will then be worth zero points, unfortunately. You don't want to get a zero out of those three essays on the FRQ AP exam. So when it comes down to some of our tips and tricks, there are um, some specific things that will pop up in almost every 
AP Human Geography FRQ. And so there are five specific action verbs that we like to talk about as being important to AP Human Geography specifically. And so these five action verbs are typically the only things that they will ask you to in class, in our class, or in the AP exam. Uh, those are the only action verbs they will ask you to use. And so uh, they may ask you to identify something. And if they ask you to identify something, you legitimately just need to answer the question identify it, right? One well-written sentence is usually enough for something that is asking you to identify, all right? That's basic. Same thing with define. If they're asking you to define something, give a definition. Just answer the question. One sentence should be enough, all right? Again, you don't have to write just one sentence. Um, you could definitely elaborate more, but again, identify and define are kind of the two basics. Um, one sentence should be fine. Then we look at describe. Describe is answer, asking you to answer and then explain what you're answering. So you give the answer, probably one sentence or so that kind of answers it, and then you explain it, give a little bit more explanation to it. Use some of your uh, vocabulary, use some of the, uh, the knowledge that you have gained from class to explain what your answer is. When we get to explain and compare, now we're looking at full out A, uh, answer it, cite an example, and explain it. So we're looking at all three of them. If you see, take a look at our little poster on the right there, it says keep calm and ace it. So ace it stands for answer, cite an example, and explain. And so that's exactly what we do. If you see the word explain as one of your action verbs, you would answer it in a sentence, you would cite an example for a sentence, and then you'd give it an explanation for one or two sentences as well. Same thing for compare. Answer it, cite the example, and then uh, give an explanation. A few more tips and tricks. We talk about descriptors. Almost all human geography FRQs are going to ask you to answer by using specific information from what we call these kind of descriptors or these broad descriptors. And so we look at it as uh, ESPND. All right. That's why we put the ESPN deportes on there. But ESPND is looking at economics, social, political, environmental and demographic factors. That's what they want you to kind of use. And so they may ask you to answer specifically from one of those. They may ask you what is an economic factor for um, whatever the question may be, or they might ask you about social um, issues related to it. All right. And so that's what you're looking at. Um, and so you can look at each of the, each one of those, the E, S, P, N, and D are specific descriptors that they may want you to use information about. And we'll go into more in depth on all those areas. And throughout the, the course, we'll learn more about economic, social, political, environmental, and demographic factors. Finally, guys, just some tips for success. Um, when you start out, and we're going to go through, and you're going to have some time to kind of work through um, some examples here and, and uh, work on FRQ success a little bit. But when you start out, you should take five minutes at the very beginning. When your time starts in class, we'll give you roughly 30 minutes to answer one FRQ when we do our unit exams. All right. Um, when you start out, you should take five minutes, pre-write, organize your thoughts, and write some information down before you start answering the questions. All right. That is really important. We're going to kind of hammer that home. You have to, you should always take that first five minutes to organize your thoughts and pre-write. Another tip for success, never leave anything blank. Don't look at it and say, I don't get it. I'm just going to leave C blank. No, don't do that. You have to write something in there. All right. You cannot get any points if you leave it blank. You can get points if you answer it. And even if you don't know about it, maybe you get something correct. All right. You only get points for correct things. You don't get points taken away for incorrect things. Finally, make sure that you leave time to go back and review your work when you are done. All right, hopefully you have a chance to read through it again, make sure things make sense. You may have to make a few little edits when you're all done uh, to make sure that you uh, have um, no issues with typos or spelling. Um, and uh, obviously spelling, do your best. But make sure that you have time to go back and read your work so that it makes sense. And then lastly, don't panic if you are stumped. All right, after you read the question, reread it again. All right, break the question down, maybe circle the action verb. All right, if there are any of those uh, descriptors, highlight or circle or underline the descriptor so you can go back and break the question down for yourself. Reread it a couple times if you need to and make sure that you comprehend what is being asked before you start to answer that question. 
And overall, ladies and gentlemen, trust yourself. You will know more than you think. All right, well, through this, the course of this class, you are going to learn things and you may forget some of them, but I guarantee there's a way for you at, to activate that knowledge and remember what we learned in class. All right, so don't panic and take your time to learn those things again or to, to bring those things back out of the back of your mind. All right, so good luck, ladies and gentlemen. Um, go ahead and take a look at our assignment today and it'll kind of take some of these tips and uh, kind of help you use them um, in an FRQ format.